Good morning. We are indeed. It is a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that's important to remind ourselves because it's tough to be glad when you can't hardly breathe outside. So we are coming to you on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost, September 13th, proclaiming the good news of Jesus. And that's news that is never old, and we need to continue, even in the midst of the times we live in, to shout that from the rooftops, that Jesus is Lord, and that His love reigns supreme over the world, and that He will be with us no matter what, no matter what we're facing. And the world, and especially us Americans, are facing a lot like right now, so I'm so glad to have you join us once again here at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Vancouver, Washington. And we are excited today to have our crew all back together. This is the first time really from the summer vacations, uh, whatnot, to have uh, my man Taylor Thornton on the mixing board. He's our AV audio video IT specialist. Joel Thorison, our music ministry leader. He's back on the bench with his guitar, ready to sing. Thank you, Joel. Good to see you, Joel. Good to see you, Taylor. And last but not least, Sister Carol Mendenhall is back. Carol, longtime member of Good Shepherd, and she is going to be our, our reader, our lector, today on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. So let's just take a moment of silence and prepare our hearts as we come before the Lord in worship. Let us now sing together. Him 406. Omnipotent 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. God be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 19 to 31. The angel of God was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And a pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there in the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on the dry ground, the waters forming the wa wall for them on the great right, on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and clouds looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to normal depth. And the Egyptians fled before it, and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters turned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. 
Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work of the, that the Lord did against the Egyptians. Some of the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Here what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapters 14, verses 1 to 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat it in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. Do not live to your own. We do not live to ourselves. We do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Here, the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you. are pilgrims on a journey we are brothers on the road we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load i will hold the christ light for you in the night time of your fear i will hold my hand out to you speak the peace you long to hear i will weep when you are weeping when you laugh i'll laugh with you I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we will find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. 
pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but, I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and he, and he could not pay, so his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So... My heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Father, you're so good to us. And in these times when we're not so good to one another, Help your word that we just heard in, in your gospel from Matthew uh, inspire us to be as forgiving as you are. Because left to ourselves, it's impossible. We need your help. We need your help now more than ever. So come, Holy Spirit, and give us your spirit of forgiveness. Amen. So when I was in seminary, a long time ago, I remember vividly the day I was sitting in class and uh, it's kind of like a John F. Kennedy moment, you know, where were you when uh, John F. Kennedy died? So uh, for Taylor, Joel and I, we weren't even born. So uh, Carol, do you know and remember where you were? Yes. Where were you? So Carol said she was at uh, the University of Wyoming as a student, and she was at Canterbury House, which uh, for Episcopalian kiddos in college, uh, the Canterbury Club or the Canterbury House is usually where we gather for fellowship and food. And in this case, she was in a morning worship service when someone came into the room and told her and the rest of them that uh, President Kennedy had been shot. I remember asking my father that same question, and I'm asking everybody now. Uh, he was in seminary at Philadelphia Divinity School. Dad will correct me if I'm wrong here, in 1963, and uh, someone came barging into the lecture hall and, you know, upset and said the president had just been shot. 
uh, if I remember that, Dad. Uh, of course, I wasn't around. So what I'm getting at is I was in seminary when someone came into the room, obviously distressed, and said that Henry Nowen had just died. Henry Nowen. And, uh, wow, that was a long time ago. And he, uh, he died young. He was on his way to Nederland, Netherlands, better known as Holland, to visit his father who was in hospital. His dad was in his 90s. And it turned out that uh, he died on that journey. So Henry was, I believe, in his early 60s, pretty young. What's distressing about it is that uh, a lot of great books, a lot of spiritual fuel, a lot of spiritual uh, fodder uh, died when Henry died. Uh, this is the same guy. He's a Catholic priest, great spiritual writer. You know, he wrote uh, The Wounded Healer, great classic. He wrote The Return of the Prodigal Son, A Story of Homecoming. Those are two giant works which I commend to you, but there's so many more. And uh, there's a quote that he once had, that he once gave, and I've written it down, I've never forgotten it, and uh, the quote goes like this. It pertains to the gospel I just read from Matthew about forgiveness. Henry Nouwen says that forgiveness is the name of love practiced among people who love poorly. The hard truth is that all people love poorly. We need to forgive and be forgiven every day, every hour increasingly. That is the great work of love among the fellowship of the weak. That is the human family. Unquote. I love that quote by now and especially the operative words. The great work of love. The great work of love. Because if you've been on this earth any time, forgiveness Love, for that matter, but forgiveness is a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. Or else it would have been, it would be called uh, cheap forgiveness. Which reminds me of the phrase cheap grace, which Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great German pastor and theologian, uh, once coined. And mind you, when Jesus talks about forgiveness in today's gospel passage from Matthew, he doesn't mean the occasional warm-hearted forgiveness, you know, overlooking someone's uh, misstep or slight, when you feel magnanimous, right, when you feel good inside, nor does Jesus mean the spontaneous forgiveness you feel when someone is genuinely contrite over some accidental or some preferably minor fault. No, I think what Jesus means in the parable we heard in Matthew's Gospel just now are those things that are really hurtful. Really hurtful. Those times when people seem so, a person seems so disinclined to take you know, responsibility for hurting you, let alone apologizing. And those are the episodes that continue to wound us every time you know, we think about them, every time we remember them. And those words or deeds have uh, marked us deeply and painfully. And let's be honest, it feels like they never go away. Those are the things that are so incredibly hard to forgive. Those are the things that require, again, as Henry Nouwen said, the great work of love. And that is what exactly this gospel and why this gospel passage is so difficult for me and for many of us for that matter. Peter asks Jesus how many times he should forgive someone and then offers to do it seven times. An answer that both more than satisfies the law and feels to most of us rather generous. And then Jesus comes back, and here it varies by translations, by different translations of the Bible. He comes back and says 77, which was what we heard from the New Revised Standard Version, Another version has 70 times 7, or the message translates it 70 times 7. Quite frankly, I think it hardly matters how you translate that, because no matter how you slice it, it's a heck of a lot of times to forgive the same person for sinning against you. 
And then Jesus goes on to tell a parable about forgiveness that, well, only intensifies his response to Peter. The parable that Jesus gives us today on the contrast between just how much one person is forgiven and how little that same person is asked to and refuses to forgive. And this time the translation from ancient currency to modern currency, it matters in order to understand Jesus' point. So take a talent. Back then it's about 130 pounds of silver and it would take a laborer 50 years to earn which means that servant owed the king about 150,000 years of labor in other words he would never be able to pay that debt back don't check me on that math by the way a denarius a denarius one denarius by comparison was worth a day's wage which meant that the second servant owed the first about 100 days of labor no small debt But still, and everyone who hears this parable gets it, how could he possibly not overlook that relatively minor debt when he had just been forgiven a monstrous, huge debt? The parable closes ominously as the unforgiving servant is handed over for punishment until he pays. And Jesus warns that we too must forgive others or face the consequences. Now, Why then do we struggle? Why do I struggle with this parable? I'm not totally sure. But I think that amid my despair at ever being able to to forgive the way the king in the parable forgives, it occurred to me that I don't have to. That you don't have to. Here's the good news. In other words, that's not what Jesus is really asking. I don't have to identify, you don't have to identify with the king in this parable. I can identify with the servant and the massive debt which he has been forgiven. That I can identify with. Which means that my first job isn't to assume or insist that I must forgive extraordinary debt, incalculable debt. But simply, simply to bask in the unbelievable forgiveness of God. In the unconditional acceptance of God. In the amazing grace of God that I and that you have experienced in life. And then, try to live out of that. Gratitude is what Henry Nouwen would then say is the byproduct of all that, what I just said. Henry Nouwen said the great arc is to move from resentment, bean counting, holding a grudge, not laying it down, not burying the hatchet, pick your your phrase. To move from resentment, which Henry Nouwen, this is Henry Nouwen talking, said is the prince of all sin. The prince of all sin in the human Resentment. He said it's so pernicious and its tentacles run so deep and wrap so tightly, you don't even know it. To move from resentment by the grace of God to gratitude. Gratitude. That's what this parable is about. The failure of the first servant isn't simply that he won't forgive his comrade, but that he has just experienced an utterly unexpected, completely beyond his wildest dreams, life-changing moment, knock you off your horse, grace. But he seems absolutely untouched by it unmoved by it like it never happened and for this reason he lives devoid of gratitude in his life 
It's like the thief just came and snatched it right away. He got this great gift, this great forgiveness, this unbelievable debt. And the, and the enemy just swiped it right away. And he went right back into his old, his old ways. Resentful. Nasty. This is important, people. We're seeing this played out writ large across our planet. The way we humans are treating one another. His whole life changed. Amazing grace knocked him off his feet. His whole life changed. And he didn't even notice. Now let's not pick on that guy. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Don't tell me this never happens to you. You know what I'm talking about. You can't beat up on this guy because he's us. He's me. He's you. How easy it is. Happy one second, down the rabbit hole the next. A little personal sharing, a little story. When I think about has this ever happened to me, it happens to me all the time, but the big whammy happened when I, uh, when I got diagnosed with cancer. And had the surgery, went through the radiotherapy. And I had the gift given to me. And I don't understand how I get the gift as a cancer survivor and other people don't. And that pisses me off to be sorry about the language. I hate cancer. I wish no one would get it. And I don't, as I just said, I don't understand how some of us, we get our lives back. That was 1989. It's a long time ago, and I'm still here by the grace of God. And some people aren't, some of them are in our parish right now, and I'm thinking of them right now, and I'm holding them in my heart all the time, every day, for God to perform a miracle and take that cancer away and get their lives back. I got my life back, and what did I do with it? In a nutshell, I started drinking like a fish. There it is. There it is. You would think, but I'm like the guy in the parable. I don't have a clue. I get this amazing gift, a second chance. And I drank it away. And the story is too long to talk about, but by the grace of God, some other factors in my life happened for me to finally snap out of it. You see, the cancer made me resentful. And I didn't know how to handle the resentment. So I self-medicated with the booze. And I was young. I was 22 years old. I was living in Scotland. I was far away from family and friends and support, away from my home church. I was like the prodigal son in a faraway land. I didn't know how to handle my resentment properly. So I self-medicated. And it almost took me all the way down. I just share that story because we all have a story where we have got to. When we get blessed, when we get that forgiveness, which is so unexpected, when we get that amazing grace that falls in our lap, we got to give glory to God. And then we got to ask God because right behind that is the enemy coming to take that away. We got to rebuke anything that's coming and give God the glory and ask God to protect us and move us from resentment to gratitude. It is hard. That's what he's talking about, Henry Nouwen. The great work of love, that's, what, that's another translation here. This movement, it's hard work. But we do it when we're doing this right now, when we're in community, when we're hearing the gospel, when we're taking the sacraments, when we're singing songs of praise, when we're saying the prayers, when we're keeping our devotional life every single day as a number one priority. This is how we participate in what Jesus is talking about here. Let me say this as I end. In case you're wondering, my friends, forgiveness is real. Forgiveness is a possibility, whether we realize it or not. My struggle to forgive, your struggle to forgive, my Inability to live in grace, your inability to live in grace, 
is not the only possibility. And further, that inability that we have is not the last word. Indeed, forgiveness comes from God. We can't do it on our own. we got to start there. It comes from God. And what that does, it interrupts our lives, or it should, so that we still, we, we, it knocks us out of that eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth rhythm. That dog eat dog rhythm. That cause and effect rhythm that we see too much in the world right now. And to put it more succinctly, the very possibility of forgiveness, again, coming from God, it creates things that we never thought were possible. It says to us, things don't always have to be this way. I don't know about you. I find that empowering. I find that comforting. I find that encouraging. We don't have to be in America right now hating on one another. It shouldn't take a windstorm for me in the neighborhood I live in to go out and to pick up limbs and to clean up down tree lines, and not tree lines, but tree limbs, and help two neighbors who have lived across the street from one another for 20 years. True story. And I'm sitting there helping holding up a tree while he's trying to hold it down. And then the neighbor across the street, 20 years, same people, across the street. He comes over and he helps hold the tree up with me. And I could hear their two wives over my shoulder asking each other, what's your name? I almost, I, almost, I almost fell down. I held that tree even stronger. I felt the Holy Spirit in the midst of that crappy night of high winds and trees down and fires getting kicked up all over the place and people running for their lives in the middle of the night, right? I hear two women, my neighbors, asking each other, what's, what's their name? What's your name? Oh, my name is so-and-so. Oh, my name is so-and-so. Wow, we've been across the street from one another for almost 20 years. How about that? See forgiveness. See amazing grace. See, it happens even in the midst of, even in the midst of whatever you're going through right now. And I know, and God knows, what you're going through, you cannot do it on your own. You know, another important part of this story, this parable we heard in Matt's gospel today, it comes a, it comes a bit later. It comes up a bit later in the gospel of Matthew. When in the 26th chapter, Jesus says, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. For the forgiveness of sins. You know, these words are only written down in Matthew. The forgiveness of sins. And they, of course, they're not in Luke, they're not in Mark, they're not in John, they're not in Paul's letters. They were uttered there in that upper room the night before Jesus was handed over to suffering and death. The night before, when he knew they would betray him, they would deny him, they would abandon him. And Jesus' words stand like a promise that even when we fail to live in the grace that Jesus offers, even when we fall short of extending to others the forgiveness that we have received, yet God is still there forgiving us, loving us, and beckoning us home. He wants us to come home. Come home. Come home. I want to say a prayer with you.
Lord Jesus, we want to come home to you. We're sick and tired of trying to do it on our own. You whisper in our ear, how's that working for you? It's not working. And we confess that we have gone astray and we have not, we have not been grateful for the unconditional love and the amazing grace which you pour out on each and every one of us every day, upon our nation every day, upon the world every day. And we act like this servant, like this slave. We act like it, we act like a bunch of fools. Forgive us. Help us move from resentment to gratitude on a daily basis. Help us to, as Paul says, if we live, we live in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. We need you, Jesus. Call us home. Call us close to your heart. Pour out your spirit upon us. and Make us whole. I ask this in the one name, above all names, whom every name on heaven and earth and every knee bows and bends towards the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let us now uh, confess our faith together, saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I don't have it in front of me. Oh, was I supposed to keep going? Yeah, keep going. Sorry. Okay. Let's do that again. Okay. Uh, do, do you have your mic on? So, I yeah, why don't you, when I, I'll, actually, you can edit it. I introduce, let us confess together, so I'll say that. And now, from the top, Joel's going to say the creed. Okay. You're not going to hear me say it, because okay. I don't have it in front of me. Okay. All right. Now you do your thing. Go on. Yeah. All right. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God commands us through Jesus Christ to love one another in baptism. In baptism, we promise to serve, to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and to strive for justice and peace, and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now honor those vows as we pray for our nation in our elected election season, for wise and just leaders, and for the needs of others through our country and the world. We pray for continued blessing on all peacemakers, on leaders who value peace, and on everyone who promotes nonviolent solutions to conflict. We pray for a speedy end to all violence and warfare around the world. We also pray especially for those who are affected by the wildfires, and also for our first responders, for their safety and their protection as they fight these fires. God of peace and gentleness, hear our prayer. 
we pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our siblings throughout the world. For the rural and the urban poor, for the rebuilding of our communities, and for an end to the cycles of violence that threaten our future. God of generosity and compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations that they may live in unity, peace, and concord, and that all people may know justice and enjoy the perfect freedom that only God can give. God of liberty and freedom, hear our prayer. We pray that the Holy Spirit may embrace the most vulnerable members of our society. And we pray also for an end to the growing disparity between the rich and the poor, and for the grace and courage to strive for economic justice. God of all gifts and blessings, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to prejudice throughout our country and the world, that we will respect all people as precious children of God, and that racism, sexism, and all other forms of discrimination will be forever banished from our hearts, our society, and our laws. God of fellowship and equality, hear our prayer. We pray for a reverence of creation, that we have the tools and the will to conserve it, and that we will use its bountiful resources in the service of others, and that we will become better stewards of all that has been entrusted to us. God of nature and universe, hear our prayer. We pray for all immigrants, refugees, pilgrims from all around the world, that they may be welcomed in the midst and be treated with fairness and dignity and respect. Lord of outcasts and wanderers, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the aged, and the infirmed, and those with physical and mental disabilities, that they may have access to proper health care, and that God's loving embrace may be felt by all who suffer. God of comfort and healing, hear our, hear our prayer. We pray for all prisoners and captives, that a spirit of forgiveness may replace vengeance and retribution, and that we, with all the destitute, lonely, and oppressed, may be restored to the fullness of God's grace. God of absolution and mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. We pray for all children and families, and particularly for the orphaned, neglected, abused, and those who live in fear of violence or disease, that they may be relieved and protected. God of children and families, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for reconciliation of all people and for the church throughout the world, that it may be an instrument of healing love. God of outreach and restoration, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have died, and especially Tina Katrika, Katika. Katika, who has died this week. We pray for all who have died as a result of violence, war, disease, or famine, especially those who have died because of human blindness, neglect, or hardness of heart. God of eternal life and resurrecting love, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Watch over our country now and in the days ahead. Guide our leaders and all who will vote. Guide them in all knowledge and truth and make your ways known among all people. In a passion of debate, give them a quiet spirit. In the complexities of the issues, give them courageous hearts. 
accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray not as we ask in our ignorance, but as we deserve in our, un, in our sinfulness. But as you, we, as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray to you also now for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, deed by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we join you, praise you, joining your vo our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, but above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into life, out of into, out, of, out of sin into righteousness, rather, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection and we await his coming in glory and we offer our praise of thanksgiving to you, O Lord, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified 
by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord. The firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ Christ our Lord, to him, to to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. want to say just a couple things, a couple announcements. First of all, what's on all of our hearts of Good Shepherd is not just uh, all the wildfires that are raging out here in the northwest, on the west coast but also this week and carol alluded to it in the prayers of the people we lost another saint of good shepherd Uh, tina katica has died and so we are holding her sons especially dan and john in our prayers and our thoughts Um, that leads me to say uh, those young men her boys her sons they uh Dan lives in the same house with the same address as his mother, Tina, in the church directory. It would be great if Dan and John could get cards of condolences and sympathy cards sent to Tina's address to support and let them know that Good Shepherd is holding them and surrounding them with love and prayers as they mourn. That leads me to go one step further and say, while you have the church directory out, why don't you peruse through the pages and see some people in there you know or even you don't know pick up the phone send a card let's let's all step up and help check on one another ask how each other how we're doing i think that's what jesus is calling us to in these times when we feel so disconnected and not able to connect and speaking of connecting we had our first bible study virtual on zoom last wednesday night It went great. The connection piece was huge for everybody, including myself. I mean, the Word of God is huge, but just seeing everybody, even virtually, was so good for the heart and soul. And so I want to encourage you, you can jump on that Bible study whenever you want, but all you got to do is send the front office, office at goodshepherdvancouver.org, your email, so we can send you the Zoom link invite. More information about the Bible study on the Facebook page and on our website. Go there and check it out. If you're still confused, 
give us a call here at the church. But I'll see you on Wednesday nights from 7 to 8.30 as we go through the Bible together. Having said that, make sure, because we're still in a burn ban and a, and a, and a, and a what do they call it? No, not a smoke advisory. A, a, a air quality. Air quality warning and advisory is through till tomorrow, Monday at noon. So please check on one another, especially if you have some health conditions with your lungs and your heart. You got to stay indoors. Uh, we're going to get through this together and with God's help. So having said that, let me give you a blessing. Life is indeed short, and we do not have much time. We're reminded, especially in these days we live in, to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind to everyone you see. Ask God to help you forgive those who have hurt you. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit strengthen you, encourage you, sustain you, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together our final hymn. Great are you, Lord. How great are you, Lord.
Let us now go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.